Hello, welcome to my channel Moretta Threads. In today's tutorial we are making this flouncy floral ruffle. This is a brooch that I have added on and it's got two little flounces on the front and the back so let's get into it. To begin, print page one and use the measuring box to measure one centimeter or one inch. If it's correct, print the remaining pages. I then like to put everything into a stack, lay it down, making sure it's all stacked evenly, and then I cut out the right hand side, cutting on that borderline, and I make sure I cut through three passes. And then I just rotate the paper to cut the bottom border line and I do the three pass thing again. It's just important to do that because if you cut too hard, you'll end up cutting away too much or too little. Your printer is never going to print a full page, so I have created margins within each paper so that you can perfectly overlap them, get those arrows to touch to create a perfect X so that you can have a seamless sewing pattern. So once you have repeated that process for all of the pages, then you can go in with longer lengths of tape to join all the pages together. Remove that excess and rotate your sewing pattern. And now you can lay out your fabric on top. Make sure that the good side of the fabric is facing up. You'll then want to grab some pins and pop them in every single circle on the top, bottom, left and right hand side. You never want to use your good scissors for cutting out paper and luckily because this is mesh you won't need to. So just follow those template lines of that spiral and cut. I also recommend just giving the fabric a little pinch so that you can get a gap to cut into as you go. Now this layer here that I just cut into, I cut into that because we are discarding that second ring but we are going to keep that center circle so just keep that in mind. You can then just remove all of the pins from the sewing pattern and discard that second ring. You're then going to grab a pin, pop it in right there where the sewing pattern tells you to do and that is because we are hemming this edge but we're stopping that hem right there. So I would call that the interior of that spiral hem but now I am highlighting the exterior of the spiral and that whole area that is marked in blue we are going to hem the whole thing top to tail. And of the edges that I just highlighted, I'm going to sew over this little edge twice. And I'll pause you right there. If you want the flower to sit on your left shoulder, the way that that little flounce drapes, you need to make sure currently when you feed this underneath your sewing machine that you are currently facing the bad side of the fabric up and the good side of the fabric is facing down. Ideally, you would actually do this with a baby lock, but most people don't have a baby lock machine. And then the next best option is to use a rolled hem foot, but I also don't have one of those. So I am just doing it the slow way of doing it once through the machine. And the narrower that you can get that edge, the better. So I am just keeping it teeny tiny and hemming it as I go. And the reason why you want to do that is because you're going to fold that edge on it one more time and the less bulk, the better. It means you don't have to spend time cutting anyway, excess fabric later. And then you're going to turn over that hem as finely as possible and repeat that process. I like to use tweezers when I'm first feeding it through just because it can be quite fine, but you get the gist. So just follow that edge and make sure you're keeping that as tight and narrow as possible. Now we're moving on to the other side, which I referred to as the interior hem of the spiral. And you are just going to sew that down until you get to the pin that we used as a marker previously. So make sure that you do that twice, a double hem, and then we can move on to the next step. So what I'm currently explaining is that circle bit of fabric. We're going to attach that flounce in a spiral pattern on that fabric. To explain how we're going to do the ruffles, I'm just going to show you an example first. So that circle is that calico and this little bit that I'm folding, that's going to pretend that it is that ruffle. So this is how we're going to attach the flouncy floral part to the circle like this. 
Now I trialed about four or five different ways to make this flower and I found that this was the best way to give it its volume by folding in organic ruffles as I go. So as you can see there really is no method to it. I go forwards and back and with that done we can now move on to the good bit. So the attachment begins from where the pin is and from where I refer to the interior lining of the spiral. So just pop a pin on that and then we can bring it across to our straight sewer. And as we crease across to our straight sewer, remember that we're going to be doing a spiraling pattern on this little circle. So starting on where that pin is or where the hem begins, I'm doing my first little fold and I'm just keeping it as close as I can to the perimeter. And how you achieve this is completely up to you. I am irregular with it as much as possible. I'm folding over, I'm folding under, I'm doing big ones, little ones, big gaps. It's really up to you. So I have gotten back to where I began and I just have now moved in where I'm sewing now, a centimeter, and I'm doing that spiral effect, like I said. Now as I near the end, I don't want to sew all the way, I want to keep a little bit of excess. So leave that excess to the side and bring this back across to your table and you just want to cut out the excess fabric that is in the center of the circle. Now we're going to work with the excess fabric. I fold it down so that I can conceal that raw edge and I just try to create that bud center of the flower. So I'm just creating an organic shape and laying it down. And I am happy with how it looks so I'm just popping a little pin in that so that I can now bring that across to my straight sewer. Then you're just going to attach it to the core part of the flower so that it can also keep its shape. Now we're on the home stretch, we can bring it all together. So I am just getting a needle and thread and I'm having that fabric, sorry, thread doubled through. I then like to just twist this around my finger and give it a little pinch and I roll it together so that it creates a knot. And with that needle and thread, you are then going to stitch over and under around that entire perimeter of that flower hole. So here's a better visual of once I've done that over and under, I give it a pull to cinch in the shape. And then I keep on using that needle and thread to manipulate where the bud is sitting so that I'm happy. And just to show you the difference, here is the flower on the right that I made earlier. And then this one here on the left is the one that we've just made. And you can see the difference there that the bud makes in creating that little center piece. Now you can just sew this directly onto your top, but I chose to add a little brooch so that I could get more wear out of my mesh top so that I could wear it on its own or so that I can also add this little flower to pants or a skirt or anything like that. So I just got some more needle and thread, did it the same way as before and I just stitched that little brooch and this is how it came together. So that is pretty much the tutorial done. I just will clarify one thing for you. So this is the flounce part of the flower. You can tell that it is attached to the flower. In this video here, you can see that I have another flounce, which is at the back. I just made a little separate flounce. Um, it was a part of a sample that I made and so I just used that but this part if you want to have more of these little tentacle things draping It is this segment here of the sewing pattern that you need to do Just cut that out and double hem it like I've explained in this tutorial and you'll be able to do that So I had a lot of goes of making this little floral ruffle and I made two types of top This one here and I used this sewing pattern but the sewing pattern was a baby tee so it was quite short however you can see that this is what it'll look like if you just do straight mesh no ruching however this has ruching in it which is more in line with what fancy club does and i find it more comfortable uh plus mesh kind of looks crazy on belly buttons i don't know i think that's just me but I, I like the ruching, I find it quite flattering. So if you choose to do a ruched top like I have, 
it's the same kind of logic as what you do with um, making that little floral you fold in the ruffles. I'll show you here actually. So what I did was I used the same baby tea sewing pattern and then I extended it 25 centimeters. Then I added in folds and then once I had the folds pinned, I popped my sewing pattern back on top and trace that outline and I overlocked the edge. I actually also recommend wearing a better bra, but I literally own like three bras. So yeah, I think like a lace one over the top would look really good, but you get the idea. So that is the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. When I drop new videos, they come with 20% off discount codes for my sewing patterns and they last the first 48 hours. Please also comment below if I can help you with anything else. And outside of that, good luck with your sewing project.